Okay, thank you. Uh, firstly, let me uh, take a chance to thank the organizer of this nice workshop. And today I'm going to uh, give a talk about the effect of hydronic in the actions on lambda polarization. Uh, this is the outline of my talk. Uh, firstly, I will introduce the experiments and some explanations to the polarization splitting effect. Uh, then I will also introduce the Mason field mechanism. And third, third I will uh, show my recent simulation and uh, results uh, based on the Mason field mechanism. Finally, a very simple summary will be um, drawn. Uh, this figure is, uh, as already now, this figure is very um, familiar to, to all, of, all of us. The RIC has performed a measurement on the global polarization, uh, and the results confirm many uh, uh, previous uh, theoretical predictions, but uh, there are still some uh, disagreements. One of the puzzle is that uh, why the uh, anti lambda polarization is larger than lambda polarization. Um, uh, some, here I list out some earlier explanations uh, to this uh, polarization splitting effect. Uh, firstly, uh, the magnetic field uh, uh, might split the polarization, uh, but uh, up to now, the large error bars occurred in the star's measurement uh, of, the, uh, of the magnetic field uh, uh, hinder us to, to, to determine the real, uh, how do you say, uh, due to the large error bars in the uh, magnetic field measurement, we are still not very sure uh, how long time the magnetic field could last. So uh, this uh, explanation is uh, still on development. Uh, second uh, explanation comes from uh, Fang Ren Hong. Uh, they propose that the baryon chemical potential could also um, induce the polarization splitting. And many years ago, I think in 2017, uh, Sorin has proposed uh, another mechanism of the axial anomaly current. Uh, they proposed that the axial anomaly charge is the same for lambda and anti lambdas, but uh, since the uh, number of anti lambda is uh, smaller than, la la than light of uh, lambda. So you would have a uh, different uh, polarization for lambda and anti lambdas. Uh, some recent uh, re explanations also emerge. Uh, for example, uh, Larissa Brevina and her uh, colleagues also proposed that uh, the lambda and anti lambda uh, freeze out uh, at different space-time regions. Uh, for example, you can see these two figures. The lambda and anti lambda are produced uh, in different regions of the cohesion system. And uh, from this, uh, this table shows that uh, the anti lambda actually uh, pro, uh, frees out uh, a little bit earlier than the lambda uh, particles. Uh, so based on this uh, mechanism, they calculate the polarization difference uh, uh, at different uh, energies, at different collision energies. Uh, you can see the polarization difference based on this mechanism is uh, relatively small, and they don't they don't have very uh, one cannot see significant energy dependence of the uh, uh, polarization difference. So this is uh, the mechanism. And another mechanism uh, comes from, another recent calculation comes from uh, the Yuri. And, and he has actually um, 
talk, 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 talk about this uh, uh, results yesterday. So I will now talk about the details here. Uh, so now I'm going to introduce uh, another mechanism which was proposed by uh, Joe Kabusta and Chennai. Uh, this uh, mechanism uh, is called the Mason field in rotating system. Uh, we can see a system during the system during hydrogen rescattering. Uh, the strong interactions between lambda and baryons are mediated by the scalar Mason and the vector Mason. Uh, we can write down the effective Lagrangian density of this equation. Uh, and then they perform the forward Ossuism transformation uh, to obtain the spin, uh, obtain the Hamiltonian for the uh, interaction between the spin and the vector Mason. Uh, in this formula, you can see that the spin can interact with the magnetic field component of the vector Mason field. And the magnetic field actually uh, uh, induced by the uh, equals to, uh, or how to say, the magnetic field of the vector Mason is proportional to the curve of the baryon current. So if you have a rotation, uh, rotated baryon current, then uh, you will induce, uh, it will induce the vector Mason's magnetic field. And this magnetic field would interact with the lambda's spin, uh, resulting into the polarization and polarization difference between lambda and anti-lambda. Um, so this, uh, this is the formula that they uh, obtain, and they also uh, this is the polarization that they obtain. And after some parameterization, they obtain uh, the polarization differences. A uh, difference uh, in this formula, you can uh, they have uh, you can see this uh, three parameter C. Uh, so they assume that uh, this parameter is proportional to the uh, direct flow, it is related to the direct flow and the shear flow. Uh, so we modify the polarization uh, splitting formula here uh, a little bit by removing the free parameter C and explicitly bring out the vorticity because the vorticity is uh, very essential in our polarization study. Uh, so this is the formula that I got. Uh, the polarization difference uh, is divided into uh, two terms. Uh, first term is, uh, is induced by the vorticity only and the second term is related to the uh, baryon densities gradient. Uh, so I define it as the delta p omega, which means uh, this is the polarization difference uh, uh, induced by the vorticity only, and define the, the second term as the delta p rho, uh, which means that uh, this is the polarization uh, difference. Uh, induced by the baryon density uh, gradient. And the, the parameter C here is different from the previous uh, free parameter C. Uh, it, was, it is defined uh, like this. Uh, it is basic, uh, basically a coefficient determined by the strong coupling constant, uh, hypermass and Mason mass. Uh, so then we use the uh, particle in cell relativistic hydrodynamic to calculate the polarization difference. Uh, okay. And previously we have performed uh, the polarization calculation uh, based on the uh, PICR uh, hydrodynamic model. And uh, this is our results and the results uh, agree, seems agrees with the experimental data uh, 
very good. So we are not going to perform a new simulation, but we use the same simulation data as in this work. Uh, but this time we are going to vary the freeze out time for different collision energies. Uh, in this work, the uh, freeze out time is fixed. Uh, but we know uh, the fixed uh, freeze out time for different uh, collision energies uh, is not uh, very physical. So this time we are going to vary the freeze out time for different uh, collision energies. Uh, then we, uh, the freeze out time is varied from 5.9 to 7.9 Fermi over C for uh, collision energies uh, ranging from 7.7, 7 7.7 GV to 200 GV. So that the freeze out temperature and uh, the baryon density are consistent with uh, the theoretical expectations and the experiments. Uh, for example, you can see here, this is the freeze out temperature as a function of collision energy and it increases from uh, low energy to high energy. And for example, I 7.7 GV, the freeze out temperature is about uh, 130 MeV. And we, we want, uh, and this uh, tendency is uh, inconsistent with the uh, Bekatini's uh, theoretical expectations and uh, also consistent with the experimental uh, result. Uh, also, the bar this is the baryon density uh, versus the um, collision energy. Um, the baryon density uh, in our model it has the same magnitude with the MPT model. This is count. This figure comes from the uh, four. Uh, he uses the uh, M MPT model. Uh, then we. Uh, calculate the polarization, global polarization. Uh, this, uh, this red square uh, symbols uh, represents the uh, new values of polarization with uh, varied freeze out time. Uh, the freeze out time now vary from uh, 5.9 to 7.9 Fermi over C. Uh, so you can uh, this is this red star uh, denotes our uh, previous uh, results, which uh, we uh, have the fixed freeze out time. Uh, the freeze out time uh, is was fixed at seven point twenty four uh, for me over C. Uh, you can see that the new values of polarization uh, are larger than the old ones. Uh, showing the sensitivity of the global polarization to freeze out time. Uh, while the, meanwhile, the energy dependence behavior of the global polarization is still kept. Uh, then we also estimate the global polarization as centrality of, uh, as centrality being of 20% to 50% by, uh, by scaling down by scaling down the uh, new values of polarization with a factor of 0 0.5, uh, because we know that uh, the global polarization is linearly dependent on the uh, uh, centrality. So uh, the global polarization uh, at 200 GeV uh, at the centrality being of 20% to 50% is about half of that uh, half of light in uh, half of light in uh, the fifty percent uh, centrality. So here the scaling factor is zero point five, and you, and we show the the new uh, we show the estimates of the global polarization with the dash line. Uh, you could see the dash line is very close to the experimental data, which are denoted by the triangles. Uh, so this is, uh, this is this figure. 
uh, we also show here the vorticity as a function of uh, 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 collision energy. Uh, actually, the, the, the magnitude uh, of the vorticity in our model uh, is very similar to the MBT model. Uh, you can see, for example, here, the, at the 200 GV, the vorticity in our model is about uh, zero. 0.02 or 3, right? And in the MPD model, the, uh, for the 200 GV, the vorticity is also about 0.02 to 3. Uh, so we have the same, the very similar magnitude of vorticity as the MPD model. <coughs> Finally, we calculate the polarization difference based on the Mason field mechanism. Uh, these red square symbols represent the delta PJ. Uh, that is the polarization difference induced by the baryon current. Uh, you can see it's very close to the experimental data, which uh, which are denoted by this uh, cross symbol with arrow bars. Uh, <clears throat> and compared to, we can compare our results with other, uh, other calculation based on uh, different uh, mechanisms. Uh, for example, this comes from the Gore, uh, Gore's work. And their result is relatively small because you can, for example, here, you can see at 7.7 GV, the up limit of the polarization difference is less than 1%. And uh, for this figure, it comes from the Lalisa's uh, results. The polarization difference is also very small, but uh, the URI's work, uh, URI's mechanism can produce a very large uh, polarization difference. So maybe this mechanism is also very promising. Uh, so then uh, we also calculate the polarization difference uh, induced by the vorticity only. That is the delta, uh, delta P omega. Uh, we denote, we, we use the uh, cyan circle symbols to represent the delta P omega. Uh, you can see the delta P omega is actually larger than the delta P J. Uh, we know that delta P J equals to uh, delta P omega plus delta P rho. So it means that the uh, delta P rho is actually negative and it decreases the final splitting effect by about one third to one fourth. <clears throat> so this is the polarization difference. And, and one might argue that uh, the, the calculation here uh, is for the golden golden golden, golden collisions at the fixed uh, par impact parameter. Uh, here the impact the impact parameter impact impact parameter ratio equals to 0 0.7. So it's uh, Co corresponding to uh, about 49% uh, of the centrality. So it's rather pretty peripheral, but how about how, what's the situation of the polarization difference for more central regions? Uh, so we show these two tables here. Uh, let's see the table two firstly. Uh, this table is for golden-golden uh, collisions at a collision energy of 11.5 GV. Uh, you can see the for more peripheral collisions, the delta PJ is larger uh, than uh, than light in the more central collisions. Uh, so, so this this is because uh, for peripheral regions, you have a shorter evolution time or you have a smaller freeze out time. So then we know that the, the vorticity decreases with the evolution time. So, uh, so it will result into 
uh, a smaller uh, polarization difference induced by the vorticity only uh, in peripheral collisions. So then you would have a smaller delta pj in uh, peripheral collisions. <clears throat> Uh, but things are different for 7.7 GeV case. Uh, we, we can see uh, this uh, table. Uh, <clears throat> uh, first, uh, let's uh, have a look at, uh, at the data PJ. Uh, the data PJ is uh, larger in more central regions, uh, which is opposite to the trend uh, that we have shown in 11.5 11 11 GeV case. Uh, uh, why? Uh, there are two reasons. Firstly, the freeze out time is larger in peripheral collisions. You can see here. The, and, uh, and we can see that uh, the vorticity uh, decreases with the evolution time, but in a very mild uh, uh, way, you can see the decreasing tendency is very mild. So, uh, so combining these two effects, uh, you will have a very similar delta p omega for different centrality. <coughs> so the, the, these are roughly the same. And then, uh, for per for peripheral collisions, uh, one. Uh, expect that uh, the barrier density would have a larger fluctuations. So this would le re lead to a larger data P row. Uh, so we know that the data PJ equals to data P omega plus data P row. Uh, so then naturally the data PJ should be smaller for peripheral collisions. But the key issue here is that whether the freeze out time is larger in peripheral collisions. Is true or not? We are not sure. Uh, we are not. We are still not very clear uh, the mechanism behind this uh, behind this uh, phenomenon. Uh, we maybe it's because our initial state uh, plus uh, hydrodynamic model uh, lose the validity in such low energy uh, case. Mm, okay, this is my talk and uh, a very simple summary is that uh, we have presented the polarization splitting based on the Mason field mechanism. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, you know, uh, for the very good talk. So uh, I think also it's very uh, sort of focus every attention on this one particular problem, which is very, of course, in interesting and relevant. So I think we have plenty of time for some question and discussion. Uh, oh, so are you still having a question or it's just that you forgot to, to know your hand? Oh, I'm sorry. I think I forgot to lower my hand. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. So, so we go to Chemin. Chemin, you have a question, right? Yes, I already chat with a number of uh, the participants about the questions. I think this calculation is based on the assumption everything has been around chemical phrase out when lambda lambda produced during Kubo fry emission of the particle is not really connected to phrase out. Therefore, you will look at the baron density he uses in the calculations about normal twice normal density that's very high. Of course, that's possible at the QTC at the hydronic matter expands the baron density decrease at the kinetic field out the baron density very, very low. So if he calculate, repeat the calculation using kinetic field out temperature, then all the effect that suspect will disappear. And that also consistent with all the other thermal model calculations, right? You, the thermal model assume the spin degrees freedom are in equilibrium with the vorticic field the rot rotating hydronic matters, and that if that's the case, then whatever happened to TC, uh, that large baryon density, large baryon uh, strong magnetic field effect will disappear at the TEK. So any comments on that? Okay. 
that's the same as like the uh, magnetic field effect uh, introduced by our chairman, right? Jim Fen, right? I, I think yeah. you use the magnetic field at the kinetic free zone, not at uh, chemical free zone. Am I correct? Uh, no, no. We use the uh, chemical free zone. No, no, no. I mean, I'm talking Jim Fen when he looked at magnetic effect, the real magnetic effect. There are two mechanisms that Jim Fen himself has uh -huh. proposed a year ago. He claimed the lambda bar, lambda splitting can be due to the, uh -huh. the real magnetic field due to the vorticity charged of the charged particles, the, the vorticity, the, the currents, the general local magnetic field, that will lead to splitting between lambda and lambda bar. I think he's, if I remember yeah. correctly, he has in mind is the, the, the charge density at kinetic free zone. Therefore, I think it, it's probably more better approximation to use the baryon density at kinetic freeze out rather than in chemical freeze out. Yes, it's yeah, uh, the, the density. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Uh, to me, you're, you're of course correct that the uh, the density, all the charge density, baryon density, or electric charge density, and so on, they all change fairly quickly with time. Actually, they typically decrease. Uh, it goes like some power of one over t. Uh, that's that's what we did check in the in the uh, MPT. So depending really uh, depending a lot on where or which moment you're looking at, uh, there's a large uncertainty, and that that's why in, in the one of the paper we did sort of show a very large band of uncertainty, namely what kind of charge density you, you use, and also vorticity itself strongly depends on time as well. Uh, if you go to that's late right. time, actually that vorticity decreases very quickly as well. So, so that really yeah. means that you know it's crucial when the lambda and anti lambda are produced. Uh, yeah, but if you yeah. remember in well, Chun Wang's calculation use MPD, he really solved the MPD sim do a simulation until the kinetic freeze out. Then he does cross screening using the local that uh, participate at kinetic freeze out. Then he still got the global polarization correct. If I understand correct, that's what the Chun Wang did. You can check with mm -hmm. him, right? He really ran to the end. Right? I don't know those hydro model, do they read the end until the end of the kinetic freeze out or they stop the chemical freeze out? That makes a lot of difference because the vorticity will be very large at chemical freeze out. It decreases quickly as at kinetic freeze out. At least uh, June, in June one's calculation, uh, if I remember correctly, he carried really all the way to the kinetic freeze out. Uh, even in that, uh, so, so, uh, yeah. omega is very small, but he still get the lambda global polarization correct, the magnitude correct. Yeah, so uh, uh, relative speaking, of course, one would, uh, if one is using a hydro simulation, uh, usually I, th well, I think uh, the better way that you write through uh, about the uh, um, chemical freeze out and then convert that into a hadron cascade, uh, especially because all, a lot of the measurements are done at a relatively lower energy. So th that'll be the ideal case. But I think for now, all this hadron cascade, perhaps uh, the spin information is ignored or you assume that the spin polarization is not very much affected by hadron resonance decay or hadronic interaction. I think that, there's kind of a talk, yeah. There's going to be a talk by someone, uh, by, by Gao Qin, right, later this week to discuss the hydro interaction effect. Well, well this is the hydro, not, a, not the yeah. standard, not the standard of hydro. They have a, a high, visco hydro followed with a hydronic afterburner. That's a standard hydro approach nowadays. So all mm -hmm. those people study spin polarization in thermal modeling, thermal vorticity. They should use the, the, the modern hydrodynamic model of including hydron after, after burner, then you don't do the cost screening like what the June one does, and then the recalculate the global polarization of lambda. And that's what mm -hmm. polarization was measured. Right. Yeah, I, I think I've speak, yeah, I spoke sure. too mm -hmm. much that the other people ask questions. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, so let's move to the next question. Yuri, you, you have a question here? Uh, okay, uh, you calculate splitting between lambda and anti-lambda. 
but it seems to me that uh, you can uh, the same way to calculate the polarization of lambdas and anti lambda separately. Am I right? Uh, sorry. What, what do you mean? Uh, that uh, instead of splitting, calculate uh, just polarization of lambda and separately uh, the polarization of anti lambda. Because uh, you accept uh, thermodynamic result, uh, results uh, for, for the values of polarization itself, somehow. Yeah, we, and then, and then uh, calculate this only the splitting. But Valechka model can uh, predict just the polarization. Maybe we don't need any thermodynamics and Valechka explains all. Uh, yeah, we, we, we just uh, calculated the lambda polarization. Uh, and I, we assume, firstly, that uh, in the thermodynamic approach, I mean, the Bekatini's approach, the lambda and anti lambda has roughly uh, the same polarization. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's good. Uh, let's uh, speak about this picture. Here you have calculated lambda polarization mm -hmm. based on the Bicatini formula, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, can you calculate without, without Bicatini formula just based on your approach, Valechka like approach? Uh, which is based on sigma and omega uh, fields. Yeah, then we calculate uh, the polarization difference based on uh, the no, Mason that, field. Yeah, not the difference, just just uh, polarization of lambdas separately. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I think... Uh, Can you go to your very sure. beginning of your talk, where you have the formula? Yeah, uh, that's your yeah, formula. Yeah, this is because the polarization. I saw yeah, this yeah. formula, saw this polarization, and uh, yeah. very great. So it seems to me you can use it and uh, calculate the polarization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can use this uh, formula to calculate uh, the um, polarization. That, that, for that's separation. Really highly interesting to see the results of calculation uh, according to uh -huh. this formula. Just, think, just I, I not, not framed, but above. Actually, this uh, polarization for the lambda and anti lambda, they have the same magnitude, but with the opposite sign. So if you calculate uh, the delta Pj, then you could uh, calculate the delta P lambda and anti lambda, which equals to half of delta Pj. So that's... Uh, okay. this, is, uh, this is difference, just calculate separately. Uh, uh, I, I think, I think, yeah. I think, sorry, he tests it correctly. That's the way you, because the Balachka model has vector meson that, that generates strong magnetic field. He wants to study the effect of strong magnetic field on the splitting of lambda lambda bar. That's the way you do it. Just that the electromagnetic field can split the lambda lambda polarization. The same idea. Just instead of using electromagnetic field, use the strong magnetic field due to vector mesons. So, so uh, I, I thought there's no magnetic field here. No, it's just the meson mean field that. So here has a gradient of rho b. That I guess this baryon number density gradient, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, sure. yeah, we can perhaps have more discussion on this point later. Okay. Yeah. So um, next, Dirk. Yeah. You have a question? Uh, thank you. Yeah. Actually, um, two uh, related questions to the freeze out. Um, you said you average from 5.9 to 7.9. So, if you do an averaging of the freeze out times, how do you do the weighting of the different ensemble members? And uh, the second question is um, let, let's, let's go to the first first. Maybe you can answer the first. Uh... You mean the weight? Yeah, I mean, I, you do different runs and freeze out at separate times and then you compute the average of the... Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, uh, previously we have the uh, same freeze out time for different collision energy. Yeah. And then for ah, the so. new calculation, we just use uh, 
different uh, phase yeah. out time for different equations. Okay, I understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. And, uh, and then uh, I was a little bit puzzled that your system in central collisions lives shorter than in peripheral. Somehow yeah, yeah. was that's only for it. Yeah, that's only for, uh, for uh, 7.7 GV case. Yeah. But for uh, other energies that uh, is larger than 11.5 GV, the things are different. What is the criterion to freeze out? What is your freeze out uh, criterion? What, when, when do uh, you need a freeze out? Freeze out criteria is like the, the freeze out time should be the same for different centrality. Uh, centrality yeah. Freeze out time is the uh, same? No, 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 freeze out time. The, the freeze out temperature uh -huh. should be the same. So this That's is a, the freeze out condition. Okay. I see, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, yeah. Hey, uh, Xiaoliang, you want to ask your question? Uh, yes, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, so, Yilong, can you go to page uh, nine? Uh, page, page nine. Yeah. This is nine? Uh, yes, yes. This one? No, the 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 uh, the, the the previous one. one. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay. so, so, uh, so, uh, you use the uh, um, um, burn density to explain the difference between lambda and anti lambda polarization. So, so from this equation, I I cannot say why uh, delta P J uh, delta P J is along the direction of the O A M. So, can 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 you explain that? Uh, sorry, can you repeat again? Uh, so why delta PJ is uh, along the direction of OAM, uh, the, the global angular momentum? He's asking you if you focus on your second uh, term. Uh, yeah, because there, we... Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the gradient row, of course, depends on the fireball and then velocity. You curl them together. He's asking why, how, how you guarantee that it's going to be along the global angular momentum in, in the outer plane direction. Yeah, yes, that's a good question. I, I guess he perhaps only projects that that component out, namely the y component of that part. He perhaps didn't look at other components. Is, is that what you computed? Uh, I just computed the uh, separate rate. Uh, firstly, I compute uh, this uh, uh, data PJ is computed from this formula, and I, co I compute uh, data P omega and data P rho. Right. So, these two. For, for data P rho, did you project it only to the Y component? Because that, that vector is. Mm, I, can be in any direction, right? Actually, at least at I didn't compute. I did not compute data P rho. I just compute data P j and data P omega, and then I found that the data P omega is larger than data P j. So, <clears throat> but if you have one have elliptic flow step in break a symmetry that could come up naturally. That's a symmetry between x and y direction. I think. Okay, may maybe uh, let's uh, move on to the next question. Uh, we have you another question here, I guess. Shui, uh, you want to ask your question? Hi, uh, yeah. can you hear? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's still on page nine. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, whether or not that uh, I, I think the second term have a relativistic version or say the 4D covariant version. So basically it's just, I, I think the second term is simply that if you have, uh, if you have the gradient of chemical potential, you can generate uh, at least uh, some local polarization, right? Or say for here, you assume it's uh, basically also global one half. I think uh, basically uh, the second term I think in the Carroll kinetic theory or recently 
I also work on that. Uh, basically, is a kind of cause some, yeah, it's basically a spin hole term. So basically, if you have the gradient of chemical potential, you can build up a covariant form of this second term. And then you can combine with the first term in a nice way that you can generate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether or not you know that there is a covariant version, probably a covariant version of the second term and the same. Uh, oh, I, I don't know. Probably that will be interesting to check how this will okay. affect the result uh -huh. because okay. if the flow is uh, large, probably this uh, non relativistic approximation is uh, not that uh, good. I don't know. Anyway, just a uh, just uh, comments. Okay, thank you very much.